A world with the Rebbe in it was a world that had an anchor. I was a reporter at the New York Times from 1975 to 1993. And um, in those years, I had many opportunities to write about the growth of the Lubavitch movement and to write about Rabbi Schneerson in particular. I think most celebrities um, are people that you may admire, but you don't get a sense that they care that much about you. And the Rebbe was different. He really cared about every person. He wanted you to be a better person. He wanted you to be a better Jew. He wanted you to practice the, um, the rituals and the commandments of Judaism. Those things would make you a better person and make the world better. When one walked into the Rebbe's study, you saw nothing but the Rebbe. It was not an ostentatious office. It's not like going into the president or governor's offices or even deans of law schools. The Rebbe's office was not that at all. It was him. He can't enforce anything he wants. All he can do is advise, and suggest. And that distinguishes him from every other leader I've met. They have the power of the purse, they have the power of the sword, they have the power of the media, they have the power of law. <laughs> Rebbe has no power, only the authority that he himself brings through his personality and his leadership. Yes. What happened to the book? Well, I'm, um, I'm doing some things in that direction, which I will I'll, mm. I'll inform you as it goes along. It takes you too long yet. You're you, right, you're you right. Have, you have much more things to do after you finish that. Okay. This was a wonderful year, Baruch Hashem, but this was our greatest accomplishment of 1988. To be elected a senator was nice, but this was the best. <laughs> but don't be such a shy. It's only with you. <laughs> Okay, we both heard. <laughs> <laughs> the Rebbe's mission was to call the world's bluff and reach right in and invert its reality and expose the core, expose the goodness. And he did that on every level, to the world entire, to each person he touched. We all wissen sein am gefinzig in a teire Welt, dass is a Welt was is a gar. Have go. You you so up to heaven. Was called the the touch the Rebbe had had it was a spark went there and ignited them and the person is not only didn't ret return to what he was. Changed completely. others and see what they are. The greatest of the great, and the Rebbe was greatest of the great, see others and see what they could become. Lubavitcher Jews around the world today began seven days of mourning for their beloved leader, Rabbi Schneerson. Rabbi Schneerson was a great leader of the Lubavitcher people. He was a great religious leader of the Jewish people. He was also a great religious leader of all people all throughout the world.
who could ever succeed this Rebbe? I mean, he was such a giant. The Rebbe rewrote the book on what it meant to be a Hasidic leader. The Rebbe sort of broke down that wall and said, I have something to give and to contribute and to teach to all Jews. He was one of a kind. So with him gone, how could the movement survive? The Rebbe's passing was a loss on a personal level, but beyond that, it seemed to be the eclipse of a light the world needed so badly. That was the true loss. But as it turned out, that was never lost. It lives on in the Rebbe's teaching, in the Rebbe's direction, that fuel our work today. For the everyday Jew to put fuel in the You know, the greatest immortality somebody can ever have is to leave a legacy and to see one's work continue after one sheds the mortal coil. And the Rebbe did a phenomenal job in preparing his movement, the Jewish world, and the entire world. To think that he had built this movement from the time he became Rebbe in the 1950, 1951, and it had this phenomenal growth, that that growth would have continued sort of exponentially after his after his passing is kind of hard to imagine, hard to believe. It just shows that, you know, the power of the message that he had and that he has been able to, in some ways, transcend life. The Rebbe saw each person as a stakeholder in this awesome project. We have the responsibility and the privilege of moving it forward. By adding one new mitzvah, everyone can become a stakeholder in the Rebbe's project as it continues to move forward and to grow. Hi friends, Shalom Aleichem, this is Benzin Gaisinski. I uh, hope that you enjoy the video clips that we sent you of the Rebbe. Uh, they were sent to you in honor of Yud Shvat, the 10th day of Shvat, which marks the anniversary of the Rebbe's succession to his father-in-law. This year will be the 71st year. Um, as you could have heard from the comments of people of stature and scholars and uh, wise men and women who talked about the Rebbe and uh, how grateful we are for his leadership, we thank heaven for the gift that the Rebbe was, is, uh, during our lifetime. Uh, to understand that we are a generation that um, came after the Holocaust, uh, a, a time when there was so much rejection of God, understandably so, and also the tre tremendous amount of freedom that our children enjoy, thank God, but we in a sense are, as you know, killing them with love. And um, what was in jeopardy, uh, in, in plain words, is the continuity of the Jewish people because uh, things left to their own accord, we would have lost millions and millions of our brothers and sisters and um, Jewish life as we know it, tradition and all. The entire Jewish people were at risk of just dissolving themselves, uh, if not the Rebbe. That is the plain truth of fact. And it was through the Rebbe's drive, love, concern, and wisdom that uh, Yiddishkeit is alive and well all around the world. Uh, and I don't think any, uh, any time before in Jewish history did one person manage to touch the lives of so many Jewish communities and even Gentile communities all around the globe. Uh, whereas in the past, it was Sephardic, Hasidic, 
Ashkenaz and each one had their own, even back in the time, they were tribes. But that one uh, person should have affected uh, literally every single uh, Jewish community around the world and do it with love is incomprehensible. And it's something to be very grateful for and something that we should therefore celebrate. So we are coming together on Wednesday night for if I bring in online, we're bringing in a fascinating guest who will bring from the West Coast, Rabbi Gershon Schusterman, who is a very lively person and great scholar. He is a notable speaker, and we asked him to take on the challenge of a familiar question, which uh, people either ask vocally and some in their heart, which is, what exactly is the relationship between a chassid and the Rebbe? We know, because we've seen it with our own eyes, that Hasidim, Labavitch Hasidim in particular, are so committed to the Rebbe, it seems to be there's an absolute trust and faith. And where does that come from? And we might even ask, is it permissible? And then I want to bring you a clip, which will be the final clip on this video broadcast right now. Um, to understand the relationship from the Rebbe to the Chassid. So the Chassid to the Rebbe and the Rebbe to the Chassid. And I'll put it this way. Uh, you would have thought after everything that you watched that the Rebbe was a very confident and able leader and that he would have been uh, very happy on the day of his inauguration um, and, and, and in a great mood, so to speak. And what you will see from this a uh, final clip, and if you listen to the Rebbe's inauguration address, address, uh, while you might not understand the words, you will hear the emotional strife that the Rebbe is going through, uh, in which moment he accepts the mantle. Um, the Rebbe, by nature, was a very reserved person, um, particularly before he took on the succession. And uh, he rather would have preferred to be left alone so that he could study. Uh, the Rebbe's knowledge, is the prodigy that he was, was beyond compare. And, and allow him to live his life in service of God between him and himself and his immediate family. But um, that's not what happened. The needs of the people and the needs of heaven came first. And so the Rebbe, with tremendous amount of pressure bearing down on him, accepts the mantle. And you'll hear it in the clip. You can hear the Rebbe's emotions. Um, he only asked for one thing after accepting what Chassidim had been pleading for, that he become the successor of the previous Rebbe, and that we not be left without a shepherd, if you care, um, the Rebbe asked for one thing. He said, I will be there and I will lead, but I need you to promise me that you will all participate and that we will do this together. Uh, so come together indeed on Wednesday night, 8 o'clock. The information will come up on the screen just, just after I finish with my comments. And uh, join us Wednesday night. Tell your friends about it. Again, we're going to try to answer a question that is pervasive, which is um, how does Judaism entitle Chassidim to have such complete dedication, devotion, and perhaps trust and faith in the Rebbe, um, which borders on in some people's eyes as almost worship. Uh, of course, that is not permissible. So then what is it then? Rabbi Shustaman will answer all these questions and you will smile. About, it'll be for about an hour. Take care of yourself. Looking forward to seeing you online Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday, January 12th at 8 o'clock. Let us know that you're coming by emailing us so that we're better prepared technically. Take care of yourself. Have a great evening.
Nata Dos hat mir sehr gegangen, hatte der Minion. Und Sadiq hat es spaßig. Ich habe sehr gewähnt genug, Paolo mit dem Esterium und Kasche ist und ich die verständliche Sachen unter. Hat man aber gesehen, hat das alles in dem Hassweg. Und mit dem so, ob man so sagen, ich sage euch. Ich muss schon wieder... Ich <laughs> Aber der Tag ist auch gar nicht, ich sage mir nicht. Das ist was anderes, ich sage alle gekommen, die Kutsche brechen. Aber darauf meinten bei uns mehr nicht, dass die Hakore, an mir sollen alle wissen, an mir sein Gefühl ist auch in dem Seel Haschwi. Was für was wird das angerufen mit der Seel Haschwi, dass alles mal los ist, und das wird sehr schwierig. Was war so gewesen, der hat noch gefunden im Riechen, als er viel dahin informiert ist, nicht für mich, hat er nicht gesucht. Er hat noch gewusst, er wollte auch sein, sein Minion, auch die Kro, war die Kro, er war die Jakri, er hat gekommen in der Nord. Was man weiß nicht von Göttlichkeit, was man weiß nicht von Niedrigkeit. Darfst du sehen, also der Dieb, was haben die sich davon gar nicht gewusst, sollen sehen gehen in die Gassen und schreien, als Hawaii kill Elo, Manit Elo, mit einer besonderen Sache, also ich habe der Rambana, Manit Elo, mit einer besonderen Sache. Und alle Kuss ist eine besondere Sache. Nur dann, dass sie mich schon geschildert haben, 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 nur dann, dass sie mich schon geschildert haben.